This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the Samsung Galaxy Tab 8.9. If it looks kind of familiar to you, that's because it's very similar to the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. In fact, you're getting pretty much the same tablet, just in a smaller, lighter, more portable size. You can see it's incredibly thin. Has the, this one has the gray faux brush metal back that's plastic. And it has an 8.9 inch display, hence the name. Still the same resolution, which is 1280 by 800 pixels as the 10.1 inch Galaxy Tab, but it'll set you back $30 less. So it's $569 for the 32 gig model and $469 for the 16 gig model. Comparing it to the Galaxy Tab 10.1, obviously above being a little bit bigger, you can see the difference in size. So particularly Android tablets be, tend to be pretty long this way. So if you found this one a little bit awkwardly large to hold or to put in your bag, this one might be just a ticket because again, you're getting exactly everything you get in the 10.1 just in a slightly smaller package. I'll lay them on top of each other so you can see the size difference. The smaller size does make it more comfortable to hold, I have to say, and I really don't miss the extra 1.2 inches of screen real estate that you're giving up with this tablet and it, it's easier to hold. It's still a bit you know wide across this way but a lot easier and it's just under a pound so that's even lighter than the 1.25 pound, one and a quarter pound Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 and certainly a lot lighter than most other tablets on the market. The next lightest one being the iPad which is 1.33 pounds and the Sony Tablet S which is also 1.3 pounds. Now I'll compare it to the iPad 2, and you can see certainly it's smaller and more portable than that. And they are both very, very skinny. And now I'll compare it to the Sony Tablet S, which is a 9.4 inch, so it's kind of in between the 8.9 and the 10.1 in terms of size. And not too different in size from the front face, but obviously the Galaxy Tab is a whole lot thinner because when you get to that thick part of the folded magazine spine on the Sony tablet, it's thicker at that end. As you can see, the Galaxy Tab 8.9 has an extremely bright and colorful display. It's every bit as vibrant, super color saturated and rich as the 10.1 tab is, and it has the same settings to control color vibrance. So if you want something that goes a little bit more natural, you can choose dynamic mode, really zings things up, standard is what we're in now, and movie, which tones things down ever so slightly, but no matter what, it's going to be the zingiest in terms of colors that you're ever going to see on a tablet. This is a Wi-Fi only model, it's Wi-Fi 802.11bgn. It has Bluetooth and a GPS, so it works just fine. It has a front 2 megapixel camera and a rear 3 megapixel camera, just like the Galaxy Tab. 10.1, and despite the low resolution, it takes fairly pleasing shots. Obviously, you're not getting a whole lot of pixels in that picture, but it's not bad, and it can shoot 720p video. Taking a look around, here's your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There's a microphone up here. It's your volume controls and your power button. Nothing on that side. This is the standard Samsung 30-pin dock connector, and here's your stereo speakers. Really loud and full, by the way, just like the Galaxy Tab 10.1. It may be a small and very thin tablet. Boy, it's got some built-in audio. And nothing on this side. The reason that it's so simple because, well, there is no micro SD card slot, no full-size SD card slot, no micro USB or full-size USB. If you want to use those kind of things, you're going to have to get Samsung's USB adapter to start plugging in peripherals. Likewise, likewise there is no HDMI out on that. You have to get Samsung's adapter that plugs into the 30-pin port here to get HDMI out to your TV. It does have DLNA for streaming, though, wirelessly, if you happen to have a DLNA-capable TV or Blu-ray player. In terms of hardware specs, again, this is identical to the Galaxy Tab 10.1 and to pretty much every other 10-inch Android Honeycomb tablet on the market. It runs Honeycomb 3.1 with Samsung TouchWiz software, and you can see some of their custom widgets up here, including their customized AccuWeather widget, a clock, CAP News Mobile here, an image viewer. It has a 1 GHz NVIDIA Tegra 2 CPU with a gig of RAM. It's available with either 16 or 32 gigs of internal storage. And we don't know if there's going to be a 3G or 4G version of this yet. So for right now, it's Wi-Fi only. Clearly, if you pick this over the tab 10.1, you're doing it because you prefer the size. You're only saving $30. That's really not significant given the five to $600 overall price tag for both of these tablets. So. I suggest if you haven't handled them, it's a good idea to go visit them in the store and see which size suits you better, because otherwise there's really not much that sets them apart. 
take a look here, we see the same set of applications that you get on the Galaxy Tab 10.1 with TouchWiz installed on it, which includes all the standard Google applications. You get the web browser, Adobe Flash, Gallery, the YouTube player, Google's music player, as well as Samsung's own music player. And you get a photo editor and the movie studio, which is a standard part of Google these days as well. Samsung's Media Hub's on here for streaming and renting movies, and they also have their Music Hub on here for buying music. They also have their own App Store, too. I'll take a quick look at that. That's available on the Tab 10.1 as well. And here you see a selection of applications. They have Featured, Top, By Category. You can create your own customized page of applications. And the selection obviously isn't as wide as the Android market, which has something like 300,000 total applications. And we don't really know because Google never says how many tablet apps, but there's plenty enough out there to keep you entertained, certainly. But I believe Samsung curates these for those of you who are worried about getting rogueware or malware from bad apps on the Android market. I suppose it's a constellation to have this here. You can see their selection of games and all that kind of stuff, and most of the stuff on here is free, as it would be on the Android market as well, where it's also available, most of it. In terms of TouchWiz, what you can see here, we've got their customized little email interface over here, their own little bookmarking setup. You've got five home screens to go through here. We have their social hub for social networking, Twitter, Facebook, and email can all integrate into social hub. We've got their little agenda applet over here, a widget that shows you what is coming up that you have to do today. That's standard Yahoo Finance widget down there. And they've customized the look and feel. Instead of the, the black background that you see throughout most of Android, they've changed it over to a white look here and changed a couple of the icons as well. And they've added the little screenshot button down here. And they've also got this little shortcut here to some handy applications. We've got their Pen Memo, Memo application. Not really sure why it's called Pen Memo, because it's not particularly geared towards a pen, but you can either use your finger to write, not the easiest thing in the world, or you can type in text. And you can do some basic drawing with this. In terms of performance, it scores about 2400 on Quadrant, which is quite good for a Honeycomb tablet. And it's actually faster than the Galaxy Tab 10.1. We're not quite sure why that would be, because they're pushing the same resolution with the same hardware and internals. But, gee, that's a nice performance number. And indeed, it, it's, it's a very zippy tablet that handles well. Take a look at the web browser here. This is the New York Times front page, so you can see full New York Times loading. Of course, this is obviously over Wi-Fi. Taking a little while to load a big flash ad in this section right here. And that's very smooth, and certainly it's a beautiful display. Really sharp and colorful. Glary like most Android tablets, but great. And very smooth pinch zooming. And it can handle Adobe Flash, which means some Adobe Flash based games that are touch control friendly. Obviously, the full Flash version of YouTube videos, or you can use the dedicated YouTube player which is just as capable. For videos you have the standard gallery application then you have Samsung's own video player which seems to do about the same thing honestly and you've got Google videos for movie purchase and rental and we're looking at Samsung's own video player here. Now this this plays 720p and 1080p video just fine as long as it's standard profile. It won't play high profile videos. Not even 720p ones which is unusual. Most tablets and phones we try they, they will do high profile for 720p. So we're just going to check out a plain old 1080p standard profile video here. And you can hear how good the speakers are. And the sound is about mm, three quarters of the way up. Smooth frame rates, no problem whatsoever, and again, for a tablet this size and this thin, 
Good audio. Netflix is not currently available for the Samsung Galaxy Tab 8.9 yet. We hope it does come. You can play Amazon Video On Demand, however, using Adobe Flash Player in the web browser. That works pretty well. Likewise, you can play Crackle using Flash Player. No dedicated Crackle app yet. Sony's holding that one exclusive to their tablet S for a while. And since this has an NVIDIA Tegra 2 with graphics acceleration, it's compatible with Tegra 2 Zone games and other 3D games. So we're just going to check out Gorilla Bomb since it's free. And it plays just fine. Smoothly as ever. Say hello to my bullets. So there's Gorilla Bob running on the Samsung Galaxy Tab 8.9 Android Honeycomb Tower. The Tab 8.9 has a 6100 milliamp battery versus 7000 for the 10.1. That's a good capacity battery, and battery life on this is, is pretty good as tablets go. It doesn't use normal USB mass storage protocol. It uses MTP, Media Transfer Protocol, which is okay if you're on Windows, and it can make it easy to transfer, well, obviously, media, music, and videos. To the tablet, uh, it doesn't mount like a hard drive, though, so transferring other files is a little bit weird. And with the Mac, we had no luck whatsoever. Even when we turned on USB debugging, which is something that worked for the Tab 10.1 for me to be able to just mount it on, on the Mac to transfer some files, didn't work with this, so I ended up using Box.net to transfer some files. It does have Keys Wi-Fi, or Keys Air, and you can use Keys over Wi-Fi. I didn't have any luck with that with the Mac either, but yeah, it does work with Windows machines. So that's the Samsung Galaxy Tab 8.9. It's going to be available October 2nd. Again, it is 469 for the 16 gig, 569 for the 32 gig. And if you're looking for an Android Honeycomb tablet, and maybe you really like the Galaxy Tab 10.1 a lot, but you just think it's a bit too big, this might be the answer. It's sure it would be nice if it was even cheaper, since they're cutting off about an inch of size, but then again, we don't really seem to be paying by the inch right now when it comes to tablets. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review.